représentant de l'association la, internationale Solidaire, euh, qui euh, euh, promotionne les SEL, système d'échange local, pour ceux qui ne connaissent pas. En Angleterre, c'est les LEX. Euh, le SEL, c'est le système d'échange local, donc euh, échange de biens, de services et de connaissances sans argent. L'unité la, la, monétaire, c'est le temps. Quelle que soit, quelle que soit le, la, la prestation, l'enseignement ou les, ou les choses qui sont échangées, mmh. physiques, de, 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 objets ou matériels ou autres, c'est euh, quantifié en termes de temps. Et si je, fais, je rends un service pendant une heure, euh, j'engrange ce temps-là. Et puis, euh, dans l'autre sens, euh, je, euh, je peux le redépenser, ce n'est pas vraiment le mot, mais je peux le rééchanger en, en, en récupérant quelque chose d'autre. C'est de cette manière-là que je suis logé à, à Montréal, parce qu'il y a la route des selles, un peu le principe de coach surfing, mais réservé pour les gens qui sont dans les selles. Et donc, je, chaque nuitée me coûte une heure de temps. Il n'y a pas de notion d'argent du tout. I think we should keep it short. Yeah. We only have half an hour. That's right. Yeah, yeah. On a just just a demi-heure, so on va garder ça très court. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, uh, so it's just games. Just games. Uh, just five minutes of what happened at the convergence of the summer. Every year. Uh, 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 like, uh, and, 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 and then that, that'll be the basis of the meeting. No. Social change and what we can do to change the world. My name is Nick. I'm from Colorado. I'm John's professor. I teach sociology at the University of Colorado. I'm Devin. I go to the University of Colorado. <laughs> I'm Amber. I also go to the University of Colorado. <laughs> professor. Can I get through? My name is Ben Clayton. I'm from Montreal, originally from Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Doug. I'm a journalist from the USA. Uh, my name is Kurt. Uh, I'm a student of Colorado. My name is uh, Chris uh, Wanamaker. I'm from St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, I'm a student of Colorado. Thank you. Can you hear? No. No, we can't hear. And this gentleman is trying to get away. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move through the, everything. It's Who are you Should with? Should we start here? I, I'm with uh, Occupy Toronto or Media. Um, I'll just continue. I'm Kimberly. I um, used to be involved in Let... Okay. I'm Kimberly. I used to be involved in Let's in the UK and founded a free shop and lived without money for a few years. Okay, uh, my name is Kevin Flanagan. I was involved with the Common Space and the Post Capitalist Convergence. So I, I hope to kind of share some of what happened there as well. Okay. Uh, my name is Laura. I'm from Finland and I'm doing a PhD on solidarity economy in Bolivia. So I'm kind of interested in like the whole economic outside of this. de la Fédération Artisan du Monde en France qui fait la promotion du commerce équitable. Uh, I'm Nina, I'm from France, uh, just a student, not involved in uh, anything. My name is uh, Axel Arsch, I'm from Norway, and I'm coordinating an international network named More and Better, uh, supporting uh, agroecology and food sovereignty, and it's an organization of farmers, fisherboats, and NGOs, and I have some brochure and uh, point to uh, a web page where you can find a lot of reports on agroecology and food sovereignty. So if you're interested, uh, you can get one of these. Hello, farmer, uh, Montreal, uh, citizen, uh, involved in many things related to the uh, economics and information science. I'm Jake from Colorado. I'm uh, oh, so sorry. Yeah, I'm Bruce, uh, an assembly organizer for the World Social Forum. I'm doing this one and the environment is oh. My name is Adrian. I'm doing a master on social media and technology. And I work at some eco quartier, but I'm not representing them in Montreal. Uh, I'll stand up if you can still see me. Uh, my name is Nicole Brassard, originally from Montreal, right now at Six Nations Territory. 
and uh, I'm part of the Indigenous and Civil Unified Sovereign Enactment and the Direct Democracy School and Decolonize North America. My name is Eric Savoie from uh, the Universal Alliance and um, I'm from New Brunswick and we're huh? also with me. <laughs> and we're, we're part of the MOVE uh, organization here uh, to converge. I believe we converge, so uh, looking forward to see what's coming out of this roundtable. I'm from Whistler, although you can probably tell from my accent, and she's from England. Um, I am the co-founder of an initiative called the Citizens Media, which is a crowd of budget platforms and shifting money from the old paradigm to new economies. And just to read as a branch from that, the I3 Cooperative, which is a co-op for doing the same thing, where the return to investors is basically data analysis that enables them to mitigate the risk um, of investing in new economies. Uh, my name is uh, Shaheen. I'm a uh, volunteer, bénévole. Uh, my maison is just là-bas. I just live over there. Um, I'm interested in uh, ecology, uh, jardinage, gardening. And, uh, yeah, happy to be here. Uh, my name is David Cam. I work with Indigenous Nations. We're running a parallel economy with about 6.5 million people. Uh, we have uh, created our own currency called the Earth Dollar, which is asset-backed, and uh, it's the uh, and also we're providing a basic income to 6.5 million people, two million people in Ottawa, uh, around 15,000 people in um, British Columbia, uh, 2.16 million people in Ghana, and five million people in uh, uh, northern India. For it's a, running a parallel economy that's opposite of the existing economy. Wow. My name is Jing. I am uh, here in Montreal. I've been 30 years I'm here and uh, I'm in uh, the arts. Um, I'm a painter. So I'm interested in how the artists can, can live. Uh, is there another way for artists to live uh, with, with the art? <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> Hello, my name is Julia. I'm from France and I come here with a French organization which is called Terre Solidaire, which is uh, fighting for the food sovereignty and I study in social economy. And are you part of the yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, my name is Rachel. I'm part of the uh, the group from Colorado. Um, I'd like to see the world change, and I'm happy to meet people that are interested in the same thing. Do you want to put a chair in here? No, just stand. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that also arrived here. Right? Uh, there's extra chairs here, right? Should we enlarge the circle? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Should I introduce myself? Yeah, sure, of course. Okay, once we're done. Hi, I'm uh, Dee Shanger from uh, Occupy Toronto uh, live stream, and uh, I've been covering this World Social Forum all week and last year in Tunis as well. So, hello world. Hello. <laughs> He's the largest live streamer in the world. Wow. Yes. Not just because of this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, uh, like we'll start off with the uh, workout was done on Wednesday at our uh, Assembly de Convergence uh, from uh, uh, 4 to 6. Um, uh, like Eric and uh, and Carolyn, we'll, we'll do a very short five-minute presentation of, of a model that we, we, we uh, constructed. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, so MOVE stands for um, Making Open Value Economy. So how do we how do we move from the old paradigm to the new? How can we converge what we're all got to bring to the table? And that's really the problem that we're here to solve in the World Social Forum. So open value economics, such as systems that Sensorica works on, is a way of freeing up what we each individually have to give. People can now get back in direct reflection to 
to what they put into the economy. So how can we activate these tools? I think there's been a lot of chaos. There always is a lot of chaos in the world. When we try and come together, we all have our visions, what we have that is unique and special and needs to be heard. There's a reason for that. And the more that we can free up who we are individually, the more we can create so many things. We can have an abundant society. So one of the things that we need to achieve this is funding. Because people who want to invest in the new economy, people who want to invest in the new economy don't know, don't understand the nature of the returns that we're talking about. Because we're no longer talking about money, we're talking about the environment. We're talking about social, we're talking about everything that is life. They don't understand that. So what they are interested in is understanding how they can have the greatest impact. I've met investors who have said to me, we would like to, or people have come to us and said, we're interested in impact investing, but we don't know what to say to them because we don't understand anything about it. So, and I also receive some sponsorship through a financial services company, and all they wanted was information so that they could then provide services because the current economy is sinking. So that's an opportunity. So if we can provide useful data analysis and invite these people into our conversation, we can give them an insight as to how they might want to invest. There is a lot of money out there. There is trillions of dollars available for impact investing. So if we can find a way of coming together and proposing what we can all do in however many different convergences we can create, then I believe that we can pull that money in. The I3 Co-op, by the way, on the board, um, board of directors is Michelle Bowers from the P2P Foundation. Um, the program I work with at the moment, Eric Howe with the, myself and um, Warren De Brook, who works with an organization called My Arms Wet Open in South Africa. What is that? It's called Zuchnik, the community is called Zuchnik. His organization is My Arms Wide Open. He has a consulting group as well called Manzin Gula. Um, um, so that was the project that we converged over this week to see how what all of us who are involved in MOVE could bring to this project, could do together. So we had a workshop on, was it Wednesday afternoon? Where we invited Warren, um, who was in Florida at the time, now in Cambodia, and Keith, David Sue Monswani from South Africa, from the Birkenet community. They joined us in a Google Hangout. We spent the first 40 minutes asking them questions about the projects that already exist within their community. Because one thing we fail to do is understand the market of the underserved people. We're only serving them 1%, 80% live on less than $5,000 a year. I don't know many people who live on that. Unless we have great understanding with these people, how can we possibly discover how we can converge solutions that are meaningful to them and can create the scalable impact that we can have? So, certain issues came up, like an issue about water. There's an increase in drought period because of climate change. So, how could we solve this problem? Was it drilling? No, it wasn't drilling. You have to go too far into the bedrock, and there's a lack of energy access that comes into the community. There is government restrictions. They're not supplying. They're not being authentic to their word. They're getting in the way of projects that um, engineers without borders are, are working on with this community. Um, so, what can we do? So, one of the people who came to is Richard. Is he here at the moment? Okay. Somebody called Richard, who has uh, a project called Agropod, that is a greenhouse that has all sorts of different elements to it, such as bubble insulation, um, where he blows bubbles, uh, very cheaply produced insulation, basically. Um, solar paneling, you're familiar with a lot of irrigation systems. Yeah, it's introducing an architecture that bubble is created where you can create a cloud cover, and this architecture allows people to grow and harvest food all year round without having any additional cost for harvest for cooling or heating winter and summer. So it's very dynamic. It brings the forces of nature to work in synergy. And 
This considers like 60% of our cost of living when you think about the food we grow. So I'd like to bring it back into the context of the community. There's a lack of water. We need to make sure that we can maximize the use of water. So through transpiration processes is another way to extract water. It happens through the, the roofing, which could be all as they build within the community. Uh, it can be in city. It can. It's very hard to. Anyway, so. We found, we looked at permaculture, areas of permaculture that could be used within the community and we discovered real ways of doing things. Um, then we thought about, how, what about, what are the priorities of how we invest? One is engaging the community, what are the skills within the community, understanding what people have got to bring to How can we create leverage from existing systems that are out there? So somebody else in the organization, Universal Alliance, their focus is they've got a basically a framework of different levels of governance and how they might relate to the, the issues such as water, including water. So when we look at the needs of Birkenek and the tools that are available, when we can match them into this framework and see what's available to us, then it will help us strategize as to how we invest. Um, I have a question before yes. we continue. Is this strictly in uh, Burkina? This is a pilot project to solo, solely in, in one area of the world. You start from the, from the ground, so yes, the pilot okay. project is based on the community of Birkenet. So these bubble greenhouses don't really work in a climate like this? Oh yeah. Oh, they would? Oh. Yeah. It's, it's anywhere. anywhere. South, north, in East East. East. Okay. It is an enclosed environment. Yeah. So Richard, so is, Richard is bringing his bubble machine. Oh. There's going to be a bubble machine oh. over here. On okay. site, show how bubbles So you'll have the temperature that we can see and all of that, so we can, yeah, all oh, neat. It's been working like 30 years on that. Wow. And I can, I can add to uh, support what Caroline is talking about. That her workshop did not for change. And it is, it is, it has brought, it is showing how much expertise is required to really foster community development and action, not tangible action, to empower these communities and individuals to do what they need to do. That is key. They don't need money. They need to know what to do. I have access to knowledge. And here in North America, we have the knowledge. We have the expertise. What I feel we've done is we've been a bridge of exchange. In the Universal Alliance, we have an alliance partner in South Africa. And they already got the project. So from building that bridge of exchange, we believe that we can share this experience with the world. It's applicable to the, any community anywhere. <laughs> I think one of the issues as well is uh, the water. Water is a big, it's in crisis, our water. There's multinational all over the world that are... So it's it's the water, like it's really nice to grow food and stuff, but if the soil has been depleted of all its nutrients and there's no water to feed the agro business, we're in trouble because it's toxic. Without getting down to the micro detail um, of this, so right, right now, just to complete the framework of move. The um, another, the other person. Because I don't want. To, I want to make sure that people who are in, we're in the convergence are included. Um, somebody, uh, Jack, has an initiative called Plenty for All, which is a cooperative model that would empower communities. It means that it's a, a community level cooperative that would, is supporting, is working already with the um, with the pod, with the agro pod. So it's it's. So the, the, I, the I3 co-op that is a funding body for supporting projects for new economies could choose to invest through these other business model structures. Um, and then uh, direct democracy, <laughs> Nicole, um, her work is about building awareness to citizens of the world that we have the capability of bringing democracy back into our own hands. And there are lots of tools out there that also help to figure out uh, transportation and those sorts of issues. So we need all these things to happen in alignment with each other. Um, alternative currencies, the system which is going to which can enable the communication is a, a, um, a platform, a crowd investment platform that brings micro investments in and gives a return in a mobile currency that can be used to purchase the outcomes of the projects that are supported through the proposals. Um, What's 
the crowd investment platform? The citizens media dot com. Okay. Citizen media, the citizens media dot com. So that's what we came up to with. Um, next month we're going to be writing a proposal and building the board, building the co-op, uh, and then seeking to bring members into the co-op that will help, that will bring the investments in. We're going to build alliances with impact investment groups and so on. So, okay, I'll leave it open for you to questions. Can I? Oh, I would like to speak for five minutes uh, later on, if it's possible, you know, is that okay? Okay. Um, uh, economics, when we look at the economics right now, the world economy, I think, needs dramatic uh, changes. Right now, economics and jobs are versus the environment, because uh, right now, Canada is uh, around 86% of the Canadian uh, mining companies around the world are Canadian operated from the Toronto Stock Exchange. So, the, so we're an economy. So why we they decide to create an economy that uh, protecting the uh, Mother Earth is the new economy of the world. Instead of uh, so, what we did was that uh, we we thought about how giving citizens a basic income for protecting Mother Earth and be sustainable through uh, 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 the Earth dollar. And how it works is, if you become sustainable and to fight climate change, you get paid a monthly salary to because it also fights poverty, but also helps the climate change. So how we got the assets to back the Earth dollar, we got uh, more than a hundred billion dollar assets right now to back the Earth dollar. How we did it was we went to a um, example diamonds that uh, diamond uh, 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 companies are going bankrupt. They have vaults of diamonds inside their vaults, but they're going bankrupt because the uh, commodity price are dropping. So we said, we'll take your diamonds to back the earth dollar. Then we went to farmers in Spain. They have around 200 uh, co-op farms that are going bankrupt because they have no money to um, for oranges, you know, to to, to buy peas the oranges. So we said Pleasure Farm, 200 organic farms, oranges to back the Earth dollar. We will use the Earth dollar to finance your um, your farm. We also went to indigenous nations who are very poor, but they have a lot of land assets like uh, trees, fresh water, mineral rights, and um, then afterwards uh, they the back the Earth dollars. So it's to create um, an economy using um, uh, untapped resources. Because when we think about it, there's a lot of untapped resources. Like one of the artists, uh, he paid. He has $5 million worth of artwork. And he said, we'll use the artwork to back the Earth dollar. So it, it's a, in a way, we can create an alternative economy through untapped resources. And, uh, and also working in indigenous nations for decolonization because in, this, is, this project is led by indigenous nations. So it's, uh, it's also, it brings back their sovereignty because it decolonizes the land. Okay, um, so um, uh, let me have an idea of the background that has been done. Um, uh, like it's up to you guys to uh, take lead of the meeting. Uh, uh, like do we break off in front of the uh, and, and put stuff together at the end, or, or do we? Yeah, because um, we've made it like this. Uh, well, uh, like, what's your uh, suggestion? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Maybe stick them on, I don't know, yeah. stick them on the poster or just yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. hold them up. Would it be easier just to, to write it down and hold it up? No, it's Everyone wants to read this. Okay, okay so let's uh, take one, pass it around. Take, take one and pass it around if you have an issue if you want to talk about. Sorry. Yeah. We're at this. And, uh, Economic alternatives. We'll, uh, Discussion group. I don't know what the best thing is. Maybe we, should we put them on the floor or put them on the wall? Um, uh, or maybe uh, I'll get the mark. On the floor, on the wall, it's easier to read. Okay, okay. Yeah, I could get some mark. Uh, I could get some mark. Uh, maybe on this we could sit it down. Action. Euh, juste une question, est-ce qu'il y a des gens qui ne comprennent pas l'anglais Est-ce que vous êtes plusieurs ou... Je ne comprends pas l'anglais. 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 Il y a un groupe qui il a parlé de leurs initiatives et on essaie juste de, de partager nos idées Okay, okay. Uh, 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 the market, uh, the okay. 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 Comprennent ou parlent en français, on peut se the... mettre ensemble oui, pour euh, avoir une discussion plus, euh, plus large que juste les anglophones. Okay. Y a-t-il d'autres mondes qui peuvent se réunir ici S'il y a des gens qui parlent français, je vous invite euh, okay, moi, je à partager. Okay. <rire> Donc, on, est, on est quatre. 
So why don't you tell me what to do? Which credit card company is that? MasterCard and Visa. Oh, yes. So we're just taking five minutes. Uh, to, we're passing around some paper. You can write, write your initiative on the paper. We're going to tape it. Yeah. Tape it on the wall. As a simple way to decide where, where you want to go. We'll say, I don't know what's north, south, east, and west. North and south. Make our own. <laughs> <laughs> huh? yeah. This is north, south, east, and west. So put it north, south, east, or west on where you want to sit, where you want to talk, and you can meet in this place. Um, okay. Together. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we have some markers for people. Okay. I'll just write this. This is just set. Yeah. I just get the Okay. Okay. My initiative. Oh, my initiative. Yeah, I'm still Yeah. Like again, uh, we probably better we can communicate in small little group. Uh, right now, we're uh, discussing about the city of Jacksonville. <laughs> Like, yeah, they have or, um, yeah. No, and everybody's got their ideas. Yeah, so, yeah. so everybody's got their ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's got their ideas. Yeah. So everybody's got their ideas. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. phenomenal. Like this young lady here uh, was survived yeah. with no money for several years. Yeah. That's a nice story to listen to. I know. Because I really know. we've got to decolonize. Yeah, yeah. it's and automated and actually. Once you system. register. I know. Yeah. You know, that's exactly. what it is. So, yeah, once you register your identity and it's you all about decide to go to the state of in that area, yeah. and, you know, then uh, they, like because we have really signed an agreement with the government in that area, is, then they receive the monthly yeah. income. And this is, this is accepted by MasterCard and Visa. <laughs> And it's this currency that has been legally valid in treaties with different nations. Yeah. These are amazing initiatives, amazing initiatives. So, yeah, a lot of amazing people here. Yes. Yeah. Lots of amazing people. Like, it's Bruce, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
forty percent to seventy percent more people working bullshit jobs, you know? Yeah. Like people they hate. Yeah, we're jobs, we need to do shit, we don't need to impress people. Uh, yeah, so, so well, I imagine if you had an extra, let's say you're, um, you receive $2,000 a month right now, you're working at a regular job, so you get an extra $1,000 per month. Would you work less or would you do more of your life of what you wanted to do? Well, I, I lived without money for three years and I just volunteered on a farm and had great food and learned and lived in nature and that was great. So, yeah, yeah. So, so you, what you're exchanging, because the currency, what you're exchanging is the currency of love. Yeah, yeah. Because you're, because yeah. you're, 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 you're helping someone, and someone helping you back. Yes. And um, you know, so, so that's the, what you're providing. It is a currency. It's not a physical form, but it's still like exchange. You know. Mm -hmm. yes. It's an exchange. Yeah, it's a fair trade exchange. Right. In you theory, know, yeah. in theory, <clears throat> but the idea, but the idea of the money aspect, like the dollar aspect of having regular currency, like it, it defeats your values. And I think this is what we need to get away from because it, it'll change who you are if you're, they're offering you a thousand dollars a month, more a month. You, you see, but you that, the currency that we're proposing for Earth dollar, it's based on two things. Okay. Number one, the current, what's the currency of uh, nature? <laughs> You know? You know? Well, but it's, um, but it's, a it's a question. What do you think it is? Currency of nature. Earth dollar. Like natural. Like biomass. No, the currency of nature is life. The life cycle. You know, it's, a, it's exchange, you know. Really. It's same. What's the currency of humanity? Love. Love, exactly. So what we did was we took the currency of uh, nature, which is life, uh, and the currency of humanity, which is love, and we manifest it to the earth dollar. So, so that that's the whole concept behind it. You know, it's very spiritual. Yes. So, uh, so we combine the currency of nature and the currency of humanity. So this comes from an indigenous uh, perspective. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Wow. Because um, uh, uh, indigenous people, their their priority is to protect Mother and Nature, Mother Earth. You know, and why not? Uh, right now, um, right now we say economics versus the mother earth so the more jobs they create the, they grow the economy gdp the more our waters are polluted from fracking mm -hmm. the more trees are clear cut mm -hmm. uh, and the more we're being destroyed it's destroying the entire planet the more waste it is. so we said Sorry, can i just interrupt the francophone group they're just going to write down all their ideas on paper and then when you're done uh, you guys if you want to do the same thing and we'll put it all together uh, i don't know when who's keeping track of the time but uh, yeah so, so let's say we now we make economics and jobs equals mother earth protecting the environment is your job you get paid for it so and that uh, fights the climate change is because it gets people they're rewarded for being sustainable and fighting climate change and green. That's what the that's a whole way of think different way of thinking. Yes, Very hard to absolutely. understand, you know. So how do you evaluate those who are protecting Mother Earth? How do you do that? Who goes around doing that? How do you <laughs> good question. Yeah. Uh, actually we're working on McGill University. Um through, they have a uh, uh, app, it's called Michael that they're working at. We're supposed to go next week and discuss it because when they purchase things or they volunteer their time to help people, I say the charity work, they will be reward, uh, they will be ha uh, have points, you know, added on and we can see, you know, so, so that's a way of... Uh, so do you buy food with this? You can buy anything you want. But we are, of within, course, we have a, within the region that accepts these yes, earth yes. dollars. Region that accepts the earth dollars. Outside the region, we have a debit card with Mastercard and Visa, and you can use that to for the exchange. But we would prefer that in the region, local. The local, yes. How do, you, how do you, I know you've got it going already in the region, how do you No, get no, this? we don't have it going in the region. It, it starts in October only. Oh, so it doesn't exist yet. It, it exists, it's working, but it, we haven't launched it yet because we think want to launch it on okay. International Day of Peace on September the 21st. Okay. The Equinox. Equinox, exactly. And if you have, guys, this is a co-creation project. So if you, anyone wants to join, 
create this together uh, or we're welcome everyone because it's not only me that we have a team but uh, we're, we have to work together and uh, to if uh, you guys are interested in joining us as a team you know to change the world uh, we're, we're well that's what we're here for uh, how do we uh, where, what is there a website to go to uh, yes it's uh, the, uh, it's called earthdollar.org earthdollar.org yes and my email is um, david uh, well oh wait david dot cam at earthdollar.org Yarg. Yeah, and Yarg. Yarg. What about this email address? Is that a good one? That's a good one also. I have, I have uh, many emails. <laughs> and uh, you can show on the camera. What do you think about What do, what yeah, do you did. think of What's your opinion? It's live, so you can say your opinion. I think this is an absolutely amazing initiative, uh, breaking down the systems of capitalism and uh, Reducing the difference between the rich and the poor, I think this is also what we need to hear about saving Mother Earth. She is our life, and without her we shall not exist. So this is a, a really, really interesting alternative. I'm looking forward to the launch in on September 21st and um, and hope to hear more. Thanks. I think it's a great idea um, to, to put people and the planet before profit and um, use the economy to make it work. We still have one hour to... Um you want to say something? I think this is an outstanding system. It's probably one of the few ways that we have to actually overcome some of the more gripping issues we have with the economy, like just the addictive nature of the currency as we have it, especially in the Western world, and how we can go back to more indigenous ways of being and address essentially healing Mother Earth in a way that can actually happen soon. Actually, uh, this is one important thing I didn't uh, express. This currency is issued by the users of the Earth dollar. Actually, it's a decentralized system. So we have a voting platform to issue the Earth dollar based on assets. So let's say a person, um, example, wants to start a new business. They can make a proposal and they can uh, put their shares saying we, we uh, will give you some shares and the people, the Earth Dollar users, will vote. We're saying we're going to uh, mint or uh, issue Earth Dollar based on the value of his business and we'll give him the uh, money to start their own businesses or their farms or, or even uh, it could be, doesn't have to be business, it could be something social. Like I have a child who's sick, who doesn't um, doesn't uh, need, uh, but we, we don't have enough money for the cancer. My, my child has cancer somewhere and I need to help my child. Now the people, the people of the macro in the world will vote. We're like, we're going to help these people. We're going to vote to help them and we're going to mint the earth dollar based on, you know, the that. So that's a concept. It's decentralized and also sovereign. So it's, we establish this as a sovereign entity. That means no country or nation state can attack and banks can attack it. Because we have our own constitution, our own court system, our own laws. So. so I have a question. You were talking about that somebody just submits a proposal, perhaps if there's a sick uh, individual in the family that could obtain some of these earth dollars. My question, isn't this earth dollar based on the result of the impact of Mother Earth? I, I think that's what I heard you at first, that yes, these yes. are distributed by the value of the impact, so it's really got, this proposal has to be really looked at when you receive it? Uh, okay, there's two, two parts to it. I'd uh, better explain it more clearly. Um, okay, since uh, one of the major assets back in the Earth doll is fresh water and uh, trees, living trees, so, so what happens if the people keep the water fresh, like clean, and actually they clean up the legs, or they let the trees grow or plant more trees, the assets backing the earth dollar increases in value. So now people want to keep the forest as it is and actually grow the forest. They want to have more, have more clean water, no mining, if it pollutes the water and trees. So we would collaborate together to protect Mother Earth, the water and the trees, and actually keep it as it is. Keep the oil in the ground, 
it's an asset. So, but why we have to dig it up? Only the way is uh, uh, if uh, it's Earth ever drops a huge value, then we can actually uh, dig up some of the oil to re, uh, to in uh, increase the value. But we don't think that will ever happen because the uh, oil underground is still an asset as it is, you know, without digging it up. So that's the concept of it. It's a global. The the all the assets are a global commons. If you think about it, it's really owned by the people of the world, the assets, and the, the, and the, the people are there to protect it. So that's the concept behind it. It's like open source, open value, open commons, the concept. It's like instead of hardware, Mother Earth is the, it's the hardware that runs our life, you know. I have another question. I'm sorry to monopolize. No, 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 no. Maybe it's made of paper. Okay. So and there's no plastic on it, which means these get destroyed quite easily. And then you have to pr produce this currency again. Are you not cutting down some of the forest to do this? Uh, no, it's digital. Actually, this is a coupon. Oh. That's a coupon for to show to show people what it look what what it is. But we do have collector uh, uh, collections of gold and silver coins and paper. But it's, it's mainly digital. It works on your cell phone, your credit card, and debit card. Do you guys have any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Makes it open. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like uh, you were saying, or keeping the oil in the ground um, is the asset. Like will keep be a backable asset. So basically, keeping keeping from extracting the minerals and keeping them in the raw state basically is what backs this uh, currency. Yeah, that's one of yes, exactly, exactly. Because uh, the banks are doing that right now. Uh, TD Bank is actually doing that right now. And people don't know about it. Uh, the, the whole accounting system is changing around the world. Right now, it's general accounting principles. By 2030, they're going to have a new accounting system. It's called Natural Capital Accounting System. Right now, you see the banks, they're buying up water rights around the world, you know, because they're, going, they're buying the assets cheap. So once they, once the accounting system kicks in, all the banks are close to bankrupt will be refinanced to the new accounting system. So it's a race against time for us to acquire assets for the people, for the banks acquiring assets to, for the fund themselves. So right now we're in a race. So we're trying to acquire assets, the same assets the banks are starting to acquire. But we said we get the assets is for the people. They're they're getting buying the assets for themselves. So that's the big difference, you know. They're, Nothing changes. One percent, everything, you know. So that's, uh, yeah. What would be the uh, first step for bringing the Earth dollar into the uh, into a new community, like an area that's really not the known Of course, there's the awareness step, but um, like, is there a registration that we'd have to go through? Or, uh, <laughs> Usually how we do it is, um, example, right now uh, we're negotiating with uh, Jacksonville, uh, Mississippi. It's 85% uh, black and they're, they're, they don't have any, uh, basically almost no funding from the state. So what? Uh, so th this is one of the cities. Usually a government, uh, like a city, a town, an indigenous nation, uh, would have to be involved with this because they're saying they're passing legislation in the city uh, or in the region, or in the that uh, gives uh, gives them the uh, saying that you have to accept the Earth dollar as a mode of exchange. So government or city, town, village, indigenous nation, uh, a country could uh, has to be involved. You know. How many are you that have developed this system? This app? This campaign, this initiative, how many are you doing this? Um, well, counting the people here who want to be involved, <laughs> uh, I think um, this is a co-creation process. So I would say that right now we're around 20 people. Um, it's a co-creation process. Everybody is involved in co-creation. Uh, that's the whole concept behind it because it's a direct democracy because we are the people. And we have, we are the ones who are involved and design it actually, and make it how it runs. So that's that's the whole concept. It's a different from mentality from the pyramid structure. It's a it's a direct democracy way of thinking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Your ideas 
if it's good, we'll be part of it. Okay. You know, it's not it's not fixed in stone. Yeah, I need to learn more because I'll introduce it to right, my community. Right, so that's a concept. Where can we learn more? Uh, okay, the website is called earthdollar.org. Dot org. Org. Yeah, org. The people doing the agriculture, but where did you where do you get the money from to like work there? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's say uh, traditionally, uh, a farmer would go to the bank to borrow money. They would say we pledge our farm as an asset to to borrow money from the bank. we uh, this is what we're doing is that instead of the going to the bank, uh, for example, in Spain we have 200 uh, farms that banks don't want to finance at all because they say it's a high risk, uh, you uh, have fruits, it's perishable, maybe people won't buy it. We're not financing 200 farms, right? So we're saying that the farms, instead of going to the bank, now you're going to the citizens of the world and we say, we have this farm and we want to finance. We, this our, My farm is my asset. We go to the block proposal, blockchain of people of the world, those people vote to print the money and give it to them based on their asset value. They say they're bad. So are, you guys, are you guys working on a list? Because each group yeah. is working on a group thing. I, I'm yeah, sorry better, to oh, yeah, I better work on a list, you know. Yeah, yeah. If, I think I we think can share I, ideas. I think we've heard, about, we've heard about your project, but it would be interesting if yeah. everyone comes up with like uh, their own um, yeah. suggestions. Yeah, so, so yeah, sure. That's I think that's great. And we're probably going to come back together in a few minutes to okay, share yeah. everything. So if it, each one of you have a suggestion, we can put it down. Well, who wants to go, you know? It's a co-creation process. Each person has a suggestion about how this we should create uh, Earth dollars should work or how it should function. We should um, put it down on paper, you know, so, because they collect the ideas, you know. Well, it's the, the theme is uh, economic alternatives, so it can be outside of the Earth, yeah, right, your, exactly. your project. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. Uh, Right now, uh, I just wanted to check just one more thing, uh, just so it's a deal. With our topic is economics, right? Right now, uh, economics, the jobs, is versus Mother Earth. This is the, the situation in the world. We made the uh, economics and jobs equals Mother Earth. So, so if you can think about the idea, well, how protecting Mother Earth is is a job. You can, uh, we can, I think that's the way. So you said they were acid backed. Yes, acid. Yes. Oh, asset. Asset. I, I said I heard acid and I didn't know. Acid, yeah, okay, so acid. <laughs> How do we define the asset? The people define the asset. I mean, the people, the people submit the proposal, okay. and the pe uh, then the pe uh, the people itself evaluate the asset. So it's not defined actually. Okay. So not capital asset. Could we make them earth asset? That's yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, I missed that. I couldn't hear. Okay. That. No problem. Okay. Yes. Um, if you guys have ideas, okay, yeah, that's yeah, I didn't hear that. Uh, okay. We're looking for ideas, you know. So I was thinking probably a good step one for getting into communities would probably go like, especially for federalized governments, go to the smallest level of government you can. I mean, like even if you're in a small town, just go right into your like your town town center, city um, city hall, you know, county commission, whatever, and start just start the conversation really and keep the conversation going. And really, awareness is the biggest thing too. You got to really get the message out to the people and make sure that it's um, put out in a way that's that really, like you were saying, shows that this is a manifestation of the uh, currency of Earth and humanity. And um, when you launch your initiative, um, you will obviously have uh, we can go onto your website, log on, become a member, perhaps pass that information through Facebook, other social medias, and get people involved? Yes. Okay. And also to sign up, uh, if enough people from that region want, and then there's, we know that people want uh, extra yeah. income, you know? Would, would you, um, would there be a capability, let's say, I live in a fair trade community right now in the Utaway region, um, certified fair trade community. If there was a need or a desire for them to learn more, would there be any capability of you coming in and discussing it with the community, like at a community center, a little? 
Is there is there yeah. ways of teaching us how to do this? I, I think uh, um, that's a good idea. It's actually teaching people how to, because one person cannot go everywhere. It's actually to teach people who actually to promote it. You know, so a teaching. So that's one of the things. Teachers. Okay, I write it down. Any ideas? Uh, so another. Another point from possibly other capitalist economies, like um, you could go to smaller businesses to start pulling more support from governments and like getting, say, just small restaurants, grocery stores, very local stores to start accepting the Earth dollar by themselves, and then the governments will, after a while, start seeing that this has real value. Okay. Uh, any uh, other ideas about the banks or uh, as a uh, competition? Any ideas on that? You mean legalized loan sharking? Because remember, <laughs> with banks, it's the nine to one uh, fractional reserve. Banks only need ten percent of what they need. They can invent ninety percent of it at, legally out of thin air, and that's called the fractional reserve banking system. We're talking one to one here instead of in legalized loan sharking. So. Um, because uh, uh, I know that uh, she talked about the money society. What do you think that do? Will you see some resistance um, from uh, people saying that, that we want to live in moneyless society? You're bringing some another form of uh, currency. Uh. Well, I think it's going to have to be a transition, probably, unless we have a sudden collapse of the economy and then we will be forced to live without a currency. And that might get rather um, difficult. So, you think you have you have can uh, overcome that mindset from the people who don't want currency to be involved in this project? Do you have some ideas? Well, I, I think people would like to be involved in a transition, but um, because living without money, I think, is just possible when you're young and fit and healthy and uh, single, I guess. Um, yeah, when you don't have any dependents. Like if I had kids, I'd probably not be able to um, just volunteer on farms and hitchhike all over the place. And um, she also wanted, how can we help farmers with this? And with um, farmers. How would we able to, because you were interested in farms, how can we help farmers with that, to have more organic uh, fruits and vegetables? What do you yes, think? I think it's mostly by funding, it's like to, to give them the equipment and uh, to give them to like adapt their local uh, needs into like something practical that they can like do and to enable their agriculture to be sustainable. How do you break down the systems, though, of farming? Because the federal governments, while well, the governments have implemented so many laws and on farmers, even when, let's say, they're milking cows, they're only allowed to milk a certain amount of liters per day. The rest it has to be spilled out. It has to be wasted. How do you, how do, they, or they're fine. So how do you get the farmers out of that system and thinking of something like without getting in trouble legally. Okay, and so that's what I was going to ask. I, I, I hate to escalate it to radicalism, but I think non-cooperation in certain communities is how you get it started. Non-cooperation with any capital or the traditional capital, if that makes sense. So create communities, not unlike uh, labor movements in the 1920s in the United States or something along those lines where direct non-cooperation and the community comes together to fill in the gaps until other communities are willing to get on board. So it is going to be a direct action campaign. I don't think, I mean, she had mentioned it's going to be a long transition, but I think that transition has to get off with direct action and non-cooperation. But you can't do it by yourself. We all know that. You cannot do So it would have to be communal. Yeah, people that will support, so an entire community decides we are no longer going to pay our rents, we are no longer going to pay dollars or yen or whatever for our groceries, you're going to have to have support and infrastructure. So I think it begins with non-cooperation campaigns. That's good. Actually, to get out of the system, um, non-cooperation is the only way. 
Because if, if, if you're uh, co complicit in the in the system, how can you cha change the system? There is a saying, you know, you cannot change the. Uh, uh, I have got uh, the the saying. Um, I don't know if you guys can help me. Uh, you can, uh, Einstein, uh, Albert Einstein, you cannot change uh, the, uh, the same the system or the same way of thinking. Uh, same way of thinking uh, of the system, you know. Mm. Logical, following the logical system, okay. negating the logical system. Right, uh, right, right, right. So, so educating people about the nature of paradigms and then what a paradigm shift is and how to make a paradigm shift, right? Like that's, like that's essentially what you're asking. Um, and it means that like people have to be, they have to be able to imagine this new, um, this new paradigm first. Imagine, okay. Well, and we live, unfortunately, all of us, no matter where we're from, in a material culture, so the non-cooperation would have to be incentivized. I don't know what that looks like, but people still operate as you transition in a what's in it for me mentality still. Mm -hmm. So there is something in it for people here, right? So, so if, we you have can, to... if you can explain what's in it for people, yes, yes. Um, what, both materially and maybe even spiritually, and in terms of the saving the planet, right? Like, uh, like actually, there's, there's a lot in it for us. There's a tremendous amount in this idea for us. I, you know, so people are going to buy into it if they see the advantage for them and for, for the people around them. To sell think, it, basically. I think one good example is also the way fair trade came in. You know, fair trade was a very slow process, and we have an entire community that is fair trade certified. The first in the province of Quebec, and it's been fair trade certified for like 20 years. It's Wakefield in uh, the Utaway region. And it just started off exactly like that, converging people together, talking about, okay, we want to sell only things that are fair trade here. Nothing that comes from industry that enslaves people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a good model to look at. It's more expensive, and of course, it's a capitalistic thing because they're making money out of it. But um, it's a. It was how yeah, they converged yeah, I think, together. I think uh, she hit on something. I think to take the next level to teaming up with organizations like Fair Trade that all, uh, already inside, that also must be outside the system already. Yeah. Perhaps uh, that's one of the ways, they're already outside, uh, so so why don't we, do, that's one of the ways to gain uh, wide uh, acceptance of the paradigm shift. We just and build on that, yeah. I, I think Gross National Happiness, what they did in Bhutan, I don't know if anyone's heard of Gross National Happiness versus GDP. They basically Bhutan do a survey every year on, I think it's like 10% of the population on their happiness and evaluate the, ha the happiness rather than GDP. And I think that's a really progressive step. Yeah. And also a citizen income is great because it makes people think about what they actually want to do in life and how they can contribute to society because we all have that need and they don't have to work dull jobs anymore and that's, that's going to change the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Interesting. If you if, say, since you're talking about uh, that is let's say uh, will, uh, you just hit on something important to women, you know, because uh, you were talking about it is because a lot of women um, when they they have children, they do they want to go back to work right away or usually they want to stay home and a lot of them don't have that financial support to 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 raise a family. They, they have to, sometimes we see that uh, they abandon the children to go to work after six months, you know, and uh, and try to find some way to take care of them. They always have a huge situation. So having uh, additional income on top of it would be good, right? So in about four minutes, we're going to all come together. And uh, since I think the MOVE group was the only one at the Convergence, they're going to represent with the, the, uh, their action plan. And then we'll have some input from the Francophone group. And whatever you guys have come up with, then we'll try to synthesize everything. Uh, that's the idea. No problem. Four, good. Four, four, How much time we got left? It's four minutes. Yes. Uh, how long is that? No, it's about half an hour. Okay. Should we do a quick brainstorm? Everyone can pick up.
get to say a key word? Oh, yeah, uh, everybody, and maybe uh, even from the people in the back also, because they didn't get a chance to speak, you know? Could I say yes, one, just one point? I haven't, I learned from, uh, I was in a festival of solidarity economy in Greek in the last October, and I learned from the Scottish people who presented this uh, community that uh, he was talking about, uh, making a commune, they had made in a small city of 6,000, small city of 6,000 population, a, a, a virtual community by internet. Okay. It is, uh, I mean, to uh, use the facility of the internet, the network, and then they communicate together through that. They present they, uh, what they need, and the other present what they can offer. And then without the, the aim is to exclude the money, the currency from the life. So uh, you are you are doing something, and you can paint my house, and I need my house to be painted. So you come, and then they calculate how many hours you have worked for me. It I will be do something for you, from my profession to you. So my, I ask them about how how much of the life, how percent of the life is run through that, and he told me. For some people, for he himself was a retired man, more than 50% of his life was running through that. And for some people, 60, 65%. One is technical, the other is a decorator, the other is a physician, the other is... So they come together through that net, internet, community. So it doesn't mean... Down, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, people in the back, would you like to say something? Uh... I just got here, so I'm... On the alternative economy, uh... Yeah, well. I don't know about it, it's economic change and if you do something, I think social enterprise can make a difference. Have you ever, because I just come here, yeah, just listen a little bit, and I, I really appreciate uh, what the man said about the community, because uh, social enterprise is kind of the power, is to cooperate with the people, and those of the land. So we not only to care about what a profit we can get, and also what what can we do to the environment to avoid uh, to prevent those kind of disaster. So I social impact. Have you ever heard this term? Uh, since these days just came, I just wanted. It's just very simple. Right now, the economics and jobs versus uh, Mother Earth, uh, or you know, people have to extract, destroy Mother Earth to get a job. You know, like extractive industry. They're also extracting our life energy and time because for most okay. jobs, like you know. So how can we? Uh, so our idea is that ec uh, economics and jobs equals the protection of Mother Earth instead of. So how can we protect Mother Earth and? have a job at the same time, so uh, any ideas would be appreciated. <laughs> I mean, did, did you talk about uh, you know, the, the idea of um, taking back your own uh, industry, your own company? Uh, because I, I believe that if um, the, the companies are ruled okay. from the bottom, you know, from the base, the, the workers who live in the in the land, who live in the in the spot where the industry is installed, maybe all the decisions who are to be made will be made thinking about uh, environment. Uh, environmental, environmental, uh, yeah, thought, you know. And uh, in Italy, in the middle of the 80s, they built a farm yeah. to help workers to buy back their companies, you know. To and we could do that also because actually the, the Earth dollar is structured as a decentralized banking system also. So, so, so let's say the person, she proposed, she has a company. And she wants to buy that company as a workers. 
they they can pledge it on the on the blockchain as a as a proposal, and the people of the world vote. Well, well, we're gonna buy this company uh, to support the workers. We can buy hundreds of companies and give it back to the workers that way, and that's a great idea. Like the the. The Earth dollar can buy any company in the world they want, even if Apple computers. Imagine, Apple computer is nothing more than an asset. Earth dollar, which is, well, we pledge it on the blockchain as a, an asset that we could print our Earth dollars because assets back, the, the, the Apple computers backs the asset, backs the Earth dollar. And actually we can buy any corporation we want to make a social change. So I think it's a great idea, you know? The multinationals are going to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> The, for this Earth dollar, you know, when you ne we never know when it will happen. You know, yeah, October. We, we all want. <laughs> we already. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 okay, 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 okay yeah. yeah. On September 21st, Equinox. And uh, but anyway, meanwhile, you can also begin to build like local and global farms to help workers to buy back their their companies. It happened here in Quebec with. Uh, Called? Yogo, with, with the Yoplait company, you know, for to make yogurt, you okay. know, and then when you, uh, Yoplait decided, Udana, no, it's Yoplait, Yoplait decided to close the, the factory, so all the workers made a cooperative company and uh, they bought back their company, uh, bought back their company, and they now it's it's working very much, and everybody in Quebec and in the time of almost two, three years, they, they all knew who Yogo was and now it works. And for me, it's a, the kind of initiative when a company closes and it all happens all the time. It's the way the, the people from the, the, the spot, the local people can keep the control on their, uh, on their economy and on their work. I just the, uh, like I love all these ideas, but I worry too that a lot of them are kind of excluding those who are most marginalized and excluded from our economy right now. So I think it's um, it, the basic income is like a really valuable idea in a transition to an alternative economy because it allows. A, I think it allows the space at the time to redefine what we think work is um, and what we think growth is and what we think wealth is. Um, and it frees people's ideas, I mean, it frees people's time and energy in order to A, come up with these different, like, invest their time and their energy into the alternative economy so it includes a lot more people. Um, and I think it can also, like, yeah, open up communities to all these wonderful ideas. Um, but right now, I don't think enough people have the space, time, or energy to be able to, like, to maybe grasp them, to be able to get involved in them. So, um, yeah, I just want to throw in basic income. Yeah, actually, we have a basic income inside the program. We just talked great. about it. Uh, cool. That's we're, great. Yeah, Sorry, we're, and that. we're providing it to, right now, 6.5 million people. So okay. We have to register. 6.5 million people. That are going to have basic income. Yeah. Really? Come off the What? Come October. How much? In October, that's what's happening. Uh, we're gonna start registration in October. Okay. And where is like all the money coming? The money comes from uh, un un untapped assets. Like we went to um, we went to a diamond company, have vaults of diamonds, uh, but they're going bankrupt because nobody wants to buy because the commodity price has dropped. And we said we'll take your assets and we'll back their earth dollar. We went to farms, like uh, I guess you even haven't been here. We went to farms, uh, like uh, 200 farms in Spain who has growing organic oranges, but nobody would finance it. We took the farms as assets to back Earth Dollar. We went to indigenous nations where the trees, fresh water, mineral rights, and they pledged their assets to back Earth Dollar. Uh, artists who pledged $5 million of artwork to back Earth Dollar. It's like, it's ongoing. People are bringing assets that are not even used. Uh, they said, we're not using my artwork, $5 million. It's worth $5 million. It's well known. We'll use it back Earth Dollar to give the people money, you know? And what is the relationship you have about the idea of uh, social money? You know, like, you have a lot of small communities in the world, in, in Brazil, for example, who are, to the opposite, making... Uh, um, uh, uh, local, very local, local money, just to keep 
the economy go going uh, going on locally you know like to do not build to to make the people buy locally and not like globally to protect their job to protect their food to protect their economy their initiatives so i'm just wondering how this earth dollar initiative which i understand why you propose it uh, how is it compatible with this other specter of the view when you have at the opposite people who say we want to be more in control of our local economy yeah. by printing our own local money okay, I will explain <laughs> that. the earth dollar has 16 million a possibility of 16 million flavors so actually we can have a montreal earth dollar then we can have uh, even a mcgill university earth dollar uh, and also we have a breast cancer earth dollar to fight breast cancer uh, and uh, uh, for causes we can have like a woman's earth dollar to support women's causes so actually we're we're the it's it's structured uh, these different flavors of earth dollars you can use it like uh, earth dollars but when you click on the extra tab you can see the additional uh, features of the additional earth dollars that additional features you can use it could be like example breast cancer two percent of all uh, transactions will go to support the breast cancer research and also care like that and uh, so it's both low that's why we say it's localized and global earth dollars we're gonna like fuse our circles and we're gonna do the uh, big group so maybe everybody here can uh... enlarge the circle let's enlarge the circle so that everybody can hear also yeah, yeah Let's, okay. we should uh, enlarge the circle. We're gonna go back. I know who they are. I would I took down a lot of ideas from everyone. Yeah, see a lot of everyone. Most of the ideas came from everyone. Still want to be blocking you, you know? to speak can uh, can share and uh, I can take notes and whatever we come up with uh, if we have one or two people can present all the ideas I love pour ceux qui comprennent pas l'anglais est-ce qu'on peut avoir une traduction c'est qu'on va faire ça en anglais et uh, quand les francophones veulent parler on peut faire la traduction Je pense que les Fran... ah, non. <rire> euh, je pense que nous, notre groupe, on aimerait bien savoir ce qui a été décidé au euh, groupe de convergence d'abord. Non, parce que euh, apparemment il y a eu comme euh, un, deux actions de convergence, deux, deux actions de convergence. Oui, et nous on n'est pas au courant et ensuite il y a encore d'actions. Oui. Ok. Merci, so, euh, Kevin. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, can, I don't, I can't tell. Yeah, I know, I'll do it in English. I'll do it in English. I was thinking that in, in our group, the sense was that there was two assembly already about that theme, right? About alternative economy. And that those assemblies have decided, have a plan in mind of action already. And that we would like to know the plan of action because we're not aware yet. For the people who could not attend uh, those assemblies, uh, maybe the person would like to share the. Uh, I said that in our group, the feeling is that we don't have the idea of the plan of action. And then maybe after that, we can present our idea and see how we can. You can start here. Oh, okay. Merci. Okay, yeah, how about that? Does that work for everybody? Okay. No? Yeah. Merci. No, because uh, was everybody uh, present at the two assemblies that have been uh, that was that were held a couple of days ago? Who was there? No? Who was there? Yes, I'm the post so I don't think everybody knows about it, and I think that we all would like to know about it before we can. Some people talk about it already. Yeah. You are not there, but but you see how many people have joined today? So I think Kevin, you have quickly. How about the yeah? Yeah, I have Caroline. I have I have I have. Just two points to make. Um, will, I just, will I just make? Let me shoot, shoot them. Yeah. Yes. Two points. Okay. Okay. Um, so my name is Kevin Flanagan. I was in the convergent, the post-capitalist convergence assembly. Uh, we, we had a process, uh, but uh, where there were many different initiatives proposed. However, we didn't have a convergence of these initiatives. So there, there, there have been many proposals that have yet to be. Uh, we haven't, you know, agreed on, you know, together collectively on these, all of these initiatives. There are many proposals. So what we can do is, we're gonna, we're gonna share a lot of those proposals after, after the social forum. Um, Though there were one or two things I would like to bring to the economic alternatives, and that is I would uh, like to just to encourage people to explore these initiatives around global uh, commons charters, what they're called commons charters. So that is the creation charters, charters uh, for the for the commons. So that is uh, that is uh, that the communities organize and make declarations. Uh, maybe working with uh, local partners about the, the principles to protect the commons, environmental commons, uh, the social solidarity economy, uh, collaborative economy. So, sorry. So I don't. Want, okay. So there, there are a number of there are a number of examples. Um, some, some very interesting things from Barcelona and, uh, and Bologna and, many, and there are many many interesting uh, commons charges to draw on but I, I would like to suggest that these commons charges can be a means for organizing political action at uh, local and regional levels for, for a post-capitalist transition. That's my proposal. I would like so I would like to if people are interested if people like the sound of that um, I guess we can speak about it a little bit more. Or come to try and come to some decisions. I'm not I'm not sure how this all works. Give them a hand on that Okay, so I don't want to repeat too much for people who were here. Um, and you got to speak louder. You got a soft voice. Okay, so what we talked about when when I when we began this the convergence circle were what are the things that we need to converge 
what are the missing parts? And one of the things is investment, it's money. Does somebody want to translate? It's a silent translation. They're good. Um, so one of them is investments, and one of them is communication. Because the majority of the economies that are being served by today's systems are communities we don't even speak with. 80% are on less than $5,000 a year. I don't know people who are on that kind of budget. So we need to bridge that gap if we're going to discover how we can converge what we have to bring in meaningful, scalable ways. So we started an investment cooperative for bringing funding to proposals that come out of bridging the gap between innovators and people within their home communities. The sell for that investment cooperative is data analysis because there's a lot of money available through impact investment out there. But in Five minutes. Investors, investors don't know how to invest. They want to make an impact. They also want to know what's happening with the economy. The stock market isn't working the way it did. It works in ways that means the more people have, the easier it is to get ahead. The world isn't sustainable in that way. They're interested. So the other thing we have is a communications platform. And the idea there is just to get people to start talking about their communities, to promote their projects, and to uh, engage in conversations and then put proposals to the i to the cooperative. And the, then the co-op has a board of expertise that can help shape those proposals in a way that can bring the investment in. So that's the, within that, we are focusing now on a pilot project, which is in Birkenek in South Africa. And the people who came together through MOVE, we looked at how we could converge within this project, how what we had to bring could contribute to an action plan in South Africa. Um, so I, we've only got five minutes, so I won't go too much into that. But a couple of the things that we discovered that we didn't know before we came here, or we hadn't thought about, including this. One was under having a really good understanding, and Kevin will speak to this, Kevin has spoken to this, of the different layers of governance that already exist, where they are a hindrance, where they are a problem, uh, and also where they can bring opportunity and leverage to the proposals that we have. We need an awareness of that, and that will help teach the co-op how to prioritize where it puts investments in. Uh, we also had direct democracy, which was about bringing the governance into the people, into the citizens' hands, so that we can make decisions over how things like the transportation system and health systems are governed, giving people awareness of what we can do. Um, what else? Um, permaculture techniques. There was a lot of discussion on how permaculture was an excellent approach for dealing with issues such as increased drought from climate change that we're experiencing. So it was an interesting uh, discussion. There's two more presentations, right? And there's two minutes. Yeah. So. So that's what I was gonna present and then hand over to Kevin to talk about post capitalism And I was also gonna say within this convergence circle that does somebody else want to represent you guys? Because there were two things that I was told about. So in our group there were two points that were brought uh, to the attention. Uh, we have the president of the World Affirmative Organization with us um, in our group. And they also had an uh, assembly of uh, convergence last night. And one of the propositions that came out was to organize uh, also maybe an alternative forum with uh, a focus more on alternative economy. 
and uh, social economy. Um, is that something? No? So, because right now the, the social forum is so big and it has so many themes that everything is a bit diluted. So having something more focused so that all the ideas can converge in one point in a specific forum. And then also in the group, uh, what came out was that every, we have a lot of existing good ideas around and we are missing links to those ideas so that as a group we have more power. So we are missing connection between uh, whatever ideas could be alternative money, alternative economy that already exists. So one of the propositions was that the World Social Forum could be one of those platforms where people could converge and share those ideas to see how all together we can make a difference by uh, doing something locally or with our own kind of uh, way of economy. Okay. Yeah, so Maybe we can uh, hear from the third group. Yeah. Uh, David has... Uh, so I, I think we we'll have to chat about that. Yeah, yeah, we got one minute. Um, our group, uh, the main thing, uh, most important thing uh, that came up was uh, by him. He said, how can we change the economic system if we're compliant to the system? We have to opt out of the system, saying that we have to non-compliant. Is, is the way. If we're always uh, in the system, how can we actually create an alternative economy? That's the most important thing uh, he mentioned. And also, um, another thing uh, that was mentioned is because of the Earth dollar and how it has tremendous value, uh, was mentioned that we can actually use the Earth dollar to, uh, to for the co uh, workers can buy back the multinational corporations and run it as a co-op instead. So the Earth dollar has that power for to provide the revenue and the funding that's needed so, so workers can actually buy back the multinational corporations and run it for humanity uh, instead. Um, also, it was uh, discussed, also our values have to be changed to so gross domestic product that is a growing economy all the time, and the economics of happiness of Bhutan was mentioned. Is that how, where, uh, what is the economy? Is the economy happiness, or economy as a number in our bank account? So right now, it's a, a number in a bank account is a huge problem. When we're saying that we want to build more business to solve the solution of the economy, it's not possible. Because actually we have to change a completely different mindset uh, of thinking. Right now, also, um, it was discussed, the uh, original idea that was discussed, economics and jobs versus the environment, Mother Earth. As we extract more uh, from the earth, we cut more trees, uh, people get more sick, the economy grows. As, as we, it, they're also extracting our life, energy, and time. Because when we're working on bullshit jobs, it's an extractive industry, and our, our, our idea was that the economy uh, and jobs should equal the protection of Mother Earth. So protecting Mother Earth would be the new economy of the world and the jobs. I just want to say uh, I made an email list that's going around. If we could continue the discussion over email. On peut continuer par courriel. Il y a une liste de courriels. So, is catering to these time schedules not just buying into the capitalist system we're challenging? Yes, we can We are all here. operating like a machine, like yeah. we're in an industry yeah. on an assembly line and we're catering yeah. to these time right schedules. On. Right on. Move on like hey, we're we hurting. we can still sit here, eh? If we want to break the schedule, let's decolonize a little bit, we can continue. We're free-spirited people, right? Yeah, I mean, we're not on a train, right? That's why we all are living by the clock, you want to right? Stay, so stay. people could get their goods by train. We wanted to make sure they were on time. You can blame the Americans for that. We'll take it, but we don't have to live that way now. <laughs> hey, disobey! Disobey! <laughs> Civil disobedience. Let's be civilized about it. <laughs>
Hey, merci beaucoup. <laughs> Muchas gracias. There's a couple of us left with braids. <laughs> So, what? Yeah, no, I thought you were going to speak some more. That's why I'm saying, oh. I'm saying fuck the clock. You can oh, yeah. speak to us. Yeah. You have yeah. some more things to say, yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah, okay, well, you missed what I said earlier? Okay, well, what, what I, what I would, what, my simple proposal is that I would like to encourage people to, uh, to explore uh, working with uh, commons charters, okay, commons charters that are written and produced with, uh, with participation of uh, social movements, uh, grassroots, and, grassroots and, uh, and the community that uh, make declarations about how we can protect uh, at, the, at the local and regional level, level our, our environmental, our urban commons, our, our public spaces, how we can co-manage those spaces, uh, how we can support and expand the social and solidarity economy, how we can support and expand the collaborative Commons, the commons-based sharing economy. That's not that's not this extractive sharing economy, but one that you know makes sure everybody's included and that everybody has that access to, you know, and everyone can participate. So there are some examples of these uh, commons charters in, uh, in uh, Barcelona. This one it's called the uh, Procommun. Uh, in uh, in Bologna, there's the Bologna regulation for the urban commons, where partnership with municipality, uh, educational institutions, civic organizations, they've created a platform for enabling social innovation around the commons and to support uh, grassroots initiatives, cooperative economies, social economies. So, uh, there are some interesting examples there, and I'm, I'm really just offering that as, as uh, something for, to explore and something to develop. And to take, to take to your own regions, yeah? This is my, my proposal. And that, uh, and that this is necessary apart for any kind of transition. Thank you. Uh, she had more too. No? Uh, well, actually, we're just talking about presenting to the forum because this afternoon we're going to present everything. So I think she would like to do it, and maybe the uh, girl from the francophone group, okay. and one other person David. over here. David. Well, he can introduce. Oh, well, it has to be a group. Uh, everyone has to yeah. be involved. It can be four. Why not? Okay. Yeah. So for it. I think this Thank you for uh, yeah. 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 You know, how can we be in this? When we're saying change the system, but we're saying we're in this system. Yeah. 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 David, is that yours? I think that's yeah. uh, yeah. right here. This place. Right. So what happens next? Uh, what happens next? Um, uh, uh, like maybe we should try to get. To, uh, it'll be nice if it was a nice sunny day. I know. We, uh, uh, like we could get everybody to continue. So I think on we're done here. So what's the next on the agenda? Um, uh, like uh, like I'm going to be uh, kicking off the environmental group, uh, uh, climatic justice. Uh, they're going to be over here. Uh huh. Um, uh, uh, like uh, like you could follow. Uh, 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 like now these people so um, no more workshops right at this second it's, yeah yeah the second round are going to start so after lunch I think now I believe okay um, uh, uh, like this is all uh, cedar to pants thing eh? uh, <laughs> like uh, 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 like it became a, I know I know it became obvious that nobody could hear the speaker so uh, uh, Kevin had a good idea and we could go with it. Those groups, uh, it just, uh, at least you can hear each other. Well, he managed to shut me up really good. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 everything. 
is his point. Yes, he stopped making comments. Arminda, Yar, D from Occupy Toronto. Oh, Hi. How are you? Uh, so what happens next? Um, we're going. We're moving everywhere. Um, so one assembly for over there. Explanations. So you you can go to, to here to them. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> and it's raining. And I was, I was, I was uh, president when you were there. Uh, excuse me. And then we brought it into Cairo. And I said I'm a for What do our smokers do? Huh? We're fucked. Our smokers? What I smokers? smoke? Uh, I'm, um, We're fucked. Uh, you, you don't smoke here? Well, we can't smoke oh, in there, yeah. right? You have to, it's a wet smoke. Yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna pause and I will be back in about five minutes when everything starts. I'll be live all day till about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're here in Montreal, the 12th edition of the World Social Forum. And it ends tomorrow and I'll be live tomorrow around 9 a.m., 10 a.m. till about six for the a wrap up and what's next uh, where's the next social forum if they've made that decision because it's not quite every year I'll be back
Okay.